everybody. Welcome to episode 88 of the TV Knitting Podcast. I am your host. My name is Sharon, and you can also find me elsewhere on the internet as Stitch Mistress or on Instagram as TV Knitting Stitch Mistress. So I wanted to get two shows out in April. I missed a week there in the middle, so I decided to record again this week, and I have lots to talk about because I went to a new-to-me festival, and that is Connecticut Sheep and Wool Festival, and I had such a great time. I had mentioned to you last week that if you see me walking around, please say hello, and it was interesting. I was taking some pictures of some sheep, and a lady came up and she looked at me from the side. She said, do you have a podcast? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, oh, I watch you. And I said, oh, thank you very much. And her name is Karen. Hi, Karen, if you're watching. Uh, she's from Connecticut. Most people uh, were from Connecticut, Massachusetts, and, or Massachusetts. And we had a great conversation. So that was awesome. Um, let's see, who else did I see there? When I was... Well, I'll tell you this story later, but I also saw um, commuter knitter, Jen, and I saw her as I was leaving, and she and Carlos had just arrived, and she was headed to go buy a bag, a project bag, and I had just bought one, so we, we were chatting all about that, and, you know, we hadn't seen each other since Ryan Beck, so that was nice to catch up with her and Carlos, so that was great. We had a really nice, nice chat, and I went by myself, because Rich had lots to do and he wasn't feeling great yesterday anyway so I went by myself and I had a fabulous day and um, let's get right into it before we start with that though I wanted to um, show you I have a finished object I finished it this week and ends are still not woven in but I'm wearing it isn't it pretty it's so pretty I'm really, really happy with it, except for one little minor thing, but I'm fairly happy with it, and I'll just tweak the other thing. So I'm going to take it off, and I hope it doesn't mess up my microphone, so I'm going to take it off so I can show you. Again, the ends are not woven in, but this is it. This is Miss, oh, there's that hawk again. Or is that a seagull? Sorry. <laughs> this is Miss Winkle. And uh, the pattern is written by Martina Bem. And I really enjoyed this pattern. Once I got into it, um, it was awesome. It took me a few tries to memorize, but I finally did. And it was very easy to memorize. The only thing is, it when you knit these loops here, um, you have to knit four, well, the pattern calls for knitting 18 rows to make a loop. I cut it to 14 and they're actually a little more loopy than I would like. That's what I don't like about it. Um, I blocked it on a, on a stick, an extender stick right, that Rich had. Oh, he's talking to me. There. Yes. I'm recording, honey. Okay. <laughs> he was out mowing. <laughs> he didn't know I was recording. Um, anyway, so you have to, I knit 14 rows to make these loops, and I can barely count to two. So initially I was, I was hashtagging it, and I was, um, I had a counter, and I was counting it, and, I, and then finally I just said, the heck with this, and I, I was, I counted in my head and I was, I actually managed to do it because with this yarn, it was really hard to see the garter ridges because it's, it was kind of dark. So, um, yeah, it came out fine. Um, the loops blocked out a little thin. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each one and just, just stretch them out a little and make them a little, I don't know, a little bit more what I would like. Yeah, that, that one looks better after I stretched them all out. So I got a little more kind of work to do on it. But I love the length. 
It's perfect. You saw it wrapped around my neck? Love that. I just love to wrap shawls around my neck. And um, this, in case you're new to the show or in case you didn't know or didn't remember, um, this was entirely, the yarn for this was entirely spindle spun. It was, um, the, the, the fiber was from Hobbledy Hoy and they were, each color was a little battling from Hobbledy Hoy and it had merino, yak, sparkle, silk, and sari silk. And I'll, I'll hold it up close to the camera so you can see, um, some of the sparkle and the sari silk. And I just love this. It came out amazing. And the stitches are so even and it's so soft. I tend to spin with a woolen style on a spindle, which means that I it, the yarn is lofty. I do not smooth down as I spin on a spindle. I, I prefer a loftier yarn. So I just let the twist go up and then I keep spindling. And it makes for just soft lofty yarn and yeah it looks pretty even too this, of course when you knit it up everything evens out even though it wasn't exactly the most even spin job but I'm okay with that so let me give you oh one other thing i when i applied i applied i, I did this on a turkish spindle and i made the little turtles and i pl and i applied them from the outside and the inside, some of them. Some of them I rewound because they kind of exploded on me, but I, I made a, um, I just wound it on my ball winder and then plied from the inside and outside. It went pretty well. I didn't really have any tangles or anything. Um, and then I joined um, the yarn as I went. So when I ended a color, I would just start with a new color and um, I joined in the plying. I should have made mini skeins because I ended up breaking them anyway because I'm a little OCD. And if you look, I'm going to show you the close up of the shawl now. If you look at it, um, this side is really nice. This is the right side, or what I deem to be the right side. And this is the wrong side. And I don't know if you can see. You know, when you make when you do garter stitch, you have one row that shows both colors, and that annoys me. You can really see it on the dark blue and the and the lime green. I don't like it. So that's the that's going to be the non-public side, and this pretty side is the public side. But I had to manage. I had to cut the the skein in order to do that. And um, I just love this lime green color, and I ran out of yarn on the bind off. So I just used the purple to bind off some of it. So what? Who cares? It looks fantastic. It doesn't matter. I don't know if you can see. See? Green. And then I bound off with a little purple. Same yarn, so it doesn't really matter. But I am completely thrilled with it. And I would highly recommend the pattern. It was super fun to knit. More fun than Hitchhiker. <laughs> Believe it or not. This one was easy to memorize. Hitchhiker, like if, if I get, got lost when I was making the teeth, it was hard to count that as well. So you, you can't, I use markers and I don't remember how, I can't tell you now how to do that. There's tutorials or people have described it on their, on their project pages. I used a marker to to let me know where I was on Hitchhiker and I don't know. I just enjoyed this more. I would knit this again. I probably will knit it again. Um, but I love it. Oh, it's fantastic. Okay, so that's that. That is the one thing I finished. And now, Let's get into what I bought. I was dying to go to a festival and spend some money. <laughs> I de-stashed 
a bunch of stuff last week. I talked about it last week um, that I wasn't in love with anymore. And I had some money in my pocket enough to pay for whatever I bought. And I'm thrilled with what I bought. And I'm going to show you right now. So if you don't like seeing what other people buy, tune out. Although I suspect that 99.9% .9 of you enjoy seeing what other people buy because I know that's what I love about podcasts is seeing what people buy. Okay. So the very first thing, so I, I got to the festival and I parked. It's $5 to park and it's about a two hour ride from my house and it's just past the, the city of Hartford, Connecticut. Easy to get to right off the highway. So I pull in, park, and I and they had me pull around and park behind a red barn, which was fine. Get out, I walk into the red barn, and there was the fleece sale. Yay. And they were shearing while I went in there. And I could not get near it. I would have loved to have watched them shear the sheep. I couldn't see it because everybody was crowded around, crazy crowded around. At the end of the show, I'll pop in some pictures of, um, I just took, took a few of some sheep that I saw there. And, and the one, I mean, every time I went back to that barn, another one had been shorn. <laughs> so it's really funny. They had them all in a pen. So the picture I have, there's a bunch of them unshorn and then this one who's naked. It's really cute. I posted it on Instagram. So I went over to the to the fleece sale. It wasn't a huge fleece sale. Um, most of it was Romney, which was fine because I don't have a Romney fleece. I, there's a lot of sheep that I don't have. I have, I have a Coradel cross and I have a CVM. That's been processed and I'm in the process of spinning. So I only have two fleeces. This is my third. Um, and, you know, I'm milling around looking at the fleeces. And at Rhinebeck, which is where I got my other two, they judge them and they put, they indicate um, the quality of the fleece on the bag. So they do it by a dot system. So blue dots at Rhinebeck are the best fleeces, according to the judges, then red dots, then yellow dots. I think that's how it works. But the blue dots are the best ones, and that's what I always buy. I only bought two, but they were both blue dotted fleece. And the judges will make comments. In this case, you're on your own. you got to figure it out. <laughs> so I had the field guide to fleece with me. Um, I know... A, thimble full about fleece. I, I'm not, I wasn't really sure what second cuts looked like. Um, so that was a gap in my fleece education because both of my fleeces that I had were fine. I didn't have any. So there's this lady there and she had a friend with her and she was helping her friend pick out a fleece. She seemed to know a lot. So I picked up two Romney fleeces small gray fleeces or blue they call them and um i couldn't decide which one i wanted one of them the hand was a little softer than the other one but the other one was still was beautiful so i caught this lady's attention and i said excuse me could you help me you know decide which one of these fleeces that i should buy so she looked at the softer one and she dug in there and she was like, Oh, here's a second cut. Here's a second cut. She said, but it's not bad. It's fine. And I'm like, okay. And we, we looked underneath and they were by the same breeder, by the way. So we looked underneath. It was a clean, really clean fleece. I was like, okay. So that one. And then I showed her this one that I bought and she said, Oh, she looked at it right away. And she says, Oh, look at the staple length. Look at the cramp. This is a beautiful fleece. We dug in there. There were no second cuts. We, went to the bottom, had it been skirted nicely, and sold. That's the one I bought. So she doesn't watch podcasts. <laughs> Her name, um, this lady's name was Sharon, and we grew up in the same town originally from Syracuse. How odd is that? She was a nice lady. But anyway, so here 
is the fleece. It is from um, Pillar of Autumn Farm. It's a Romney. It's four pounds. The, the sheep's name is Taja, and she is apparently a blue Romney. Um, four pounds. I paid forty dollars for her total, and I think that's a good price for four pounds. Um, Romney is a longer is a long wool, but I think this this fleece is going to be very very soft once it's processed. And really, honestly, it should be combed. I'm not gonna comb it. I don't have combs. Um, it has such lovely long locks. There it is. Isn't it pretty? I'll get up a little closer. Hopefully it'll focus. You can see the crimp. Right there. It's gorgeous. I'll pull out a lock and I'll show you. Um, yeah, you can really see. Oh, these locks are beautiful. I mean, beautiful. It'll we'll probably be fairly easy to wash. So let's see. How long is this? This has a, a six inch staple length. I'm measuring it over here on my, on my sewing board. And here is a lock. Let me get that to focus because you don't want to miss seeing. There we go. Look at the crimp, and that is six inches long. Gorgeous. I may keep a couple and just wash them myself just to see, and uh, keep a couple locks. Um, this is, fleece is actually going out tomorrow in the mail. I'm going to send it to Sherry from Moral Fleece Works, and I'm going to have her um, car put this through the carter for me, uh, wash it, and, and um, make um, oh my goodness, I can't think of it now. Pin drafted roving, thank you. Um, pin drafted roving is just, you know, it's a thin. It comes. Instead of like a bat where it's thick, it's it's a thin, thin roving, and she must have some sort of machine that she does it on. And oh, it pings so nicely when you do this, and you listen. It's got a if it pings, that means it's a strong fleece. I think this is going to be so fun to spin, and it's soft. It's nice and soft, and the crimp on it's amazing. It's going to make such a bouncy yarn, and. I'd love for it to be a sweater. Um, I think it would make a great sweater. I think it would be definitely soft enough. I don't wear my sweaters next to skin anyway. So I would always wear a shirt under it. And ooh, it's nice sheepy smell. It is beautiful. And yeah, it's pretty clean. There's some DM in it, but not bad. And it's gorgeous. So that was my first purchase. Beautiful Taja. And I probably should get back a good amount of fleece, uh, a good amount of uh, pin drafted roving from that because um, Romney is not a greasy fleece. So the weight shouldn't go down too much. I'll let you know when I get it back. It's exactly four pounds. So. All right, so that's that's her. And then I was talking to somebody later on during the day, and we were talking about festivals, and we were saying, and I was saying how much I was enjoying this one, and she said, yep, you can find some hidden treasures. And I said, you're absolutely correct. And that's why I like to go to these little things, because you find vendors that you wouldn't know about or wouldn't see at the bigger shows. So. Perfect example of this is the next thing I bought. Um, it was in the same barn. I'm going through my day <laughs> as to what I bought next and next. And this is from Tranquil Morning Farm. And it is a bump. 
probably a bat. She probably did it on a on a on a on a carding machine. On a drum carter. Um That's the card that came with it. She puts the little picture of the sheep. It's a Shetland. The sheep's name is Aster. There's three ounces here, and it's a beautiful, beautiful shade um, of gray. She calls it musket. Oh, here we go. So yeah, here's the little bats. Beautiful. She does all of the, these little bats herself. She processes, so she hand processed this, this Shetland. Oh, it's nice, it's very soft, gorgeous. So I'll just split up these little, this bat and spin it long draw. And it's gonna be very enjoyable. I was very attracted to gray during this show for some reason. I really thought it was very pretty. So yeah, again, that is from Tranquil Morning Farm, and they they're on the they're on the uh, internet, Tranquil Morning. Dot webs dot com and I will try to put all of these links in the show notes. I know that the person who sold me or who bred the fleece here that I bought is on Facebook, so I'm going to friend her on Facebook because that fleece is really pretty. I wish I could wash fleece because that would probably be a fun one to wash, but I just can't can't do it. Okay, and this is another thing that I got from Tranquil Morning Farm. This is Kid Mohair Locks. The goat's name is Rocket. So um, this is two ounces, and she hand she dyed this, and the color is navy and oh, pretty. Really, oh, these are so pretty. And I asked her. I said, I've never spun mohair before, locks, and I said. You know, how should I spin this? She said, oh, you could spin it right from the lock. And, um, and it'll be fuzzier once you finish the yarn. So what I think I'm going to do, let me show you. Those are the locks. Beautiful. It's so soft. And these are going to go on my wheel next. Um, I just need to apply the Cormo top. I'm, I finished it. Finished spinning the single. I just need to apply them. And this is going on next. So I'm going to spin this. This is two ounces. I'm going to spin it rather fine. And then I'm going to spin this. And I'm going to apply them together. I think that would be really pretty. So the other thing I could do is I could hold them together and spin them. I don't know. I don't know how that would work with long draw. I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to spin the mohair, spin this, and then just apply them together. See what I get. How bad could it be? <laughs> okay. So that's, that was amazing. Um, lovely gal. She, again, um, processes everything herself. And it's called Tranquil Morning Farm. So I'm going to have Rocket and Aster together as a yarn. So that's super fun. So after that, I went out, out of that barn and I walked around a little bit. Um, then, there, then I went into another barn and looked around. And I came upon a vendor who I've heard of before on other podcasts, and that is Fat Cat Knits. And I really was interested in looking at some of her things because I know Amy Beth, Fat Squirrel Speaks, has talked about Fat Cat Knits, I think. And I know Malia from the Yarn Raising 
podcast definitely has talked about fat cat knits and how nice her her stuff is. So she had a lot of um, comb top, which is fine. Um, I'm not really in the market for comb top at this point. So I was like, okay. And then I looked over and she had a couple, she had a few bats. I love bats. So I found this one. Completely my colors. And I t spoke to her ap actually afterwards, um, well, actually when I was buying it. And um, if you look at the tag, she has everything that it could that could be in it. She wrote everything is in it. <laughs> so everything that's on here, I'm not going to list them all, but everything. So if you look at this, here's her tag. Fat Cat Knits. She's really nice. Um, and I, I asked her if she watched podcasts, and, and she wasn't familiar with mine. I'm not sure how much she watched. And we actually talked, and she may um, sponsor something for us on the show. So that's pretty awesome. So hi. I hope that works out. Well, I'm going to email you soon. So, um, yeah, this bat is beautiful. I'm going to take it out. Even prettier outside the bag. So pretty. Oh, I love bats. Look, it's beautiful. All sorts of colors. Oh, it's beautiful on the inside. Look, there's oranges in there. Isn't that pretty? And there's little pieces of confetti in this bat, which is super fun to spin. Sorry silk, I see. I see um, sparkle. It's gorgeous. This is next. After I spin the, that um, mohair and that... Um, that Shetland and ply them together, this is going to be next. And these will go quick because I'll spin them long draw. See, now you know why I'm not going to make my spin the bid goal. <laughs> There's no way because I have other things that I bought that I want to spin. I want to spin this stuff while, while it's still pretty fresh and, not, and I don't want it to get compacted. So, you know, I'll put this away later. Beautiful. So that's that. All right. So then I wandered around a little more and um, I think there's three barns, three barns, and there was an outside, there's some outside vendors. So I also bought some soap that I didn't bring up here because um, Rich and I like like natural soap and it was it's goat and lanolin soap unscented I didn't like the scents but the unscented will be fine um, and then I went into a building and I actually had seen this vendor listed when I looked at the vendor list and I was like I need to check them out um, this vendor is not fiber it's actually made from a plant, but it is it is not fiber. And this vendor is called Haydenville Broomworks. Now I love tools that are beautiful and also functional. And this is what I bought. Isn't it pretty? This is handmade. And she said that this will last me a lifetime and it's gorgeous. It's a shaker broom, all handmade. And I tried it out and it, it just takes all the dirt. I mean, it finds everything. It's wonderful. 
So I purchased it and I actually picked it up. I bought it and then I picked it up on my way out because I didn't want to carry it through the whole show. So um, it's just, it's so natural looking. It's got little seeds on it still. You make it from, from um, broom corn. Who knew there was such a thing? So I love it. It's gorgeous. And again, it's from Haydenville Broom Works. And I'll put the link in the show notes. And they were so nice. Um, young girls uh, are doing the business. And I asked them, how did you get involved in broom making? <laughs> right? Um, and she, she was telling me about her neighbor did the business and he decided he wanted to retire. So she was interested and she learned how to do it. And now she took over the business rather than working in a stuffy office all day. I think that sounds amazing. And I love supporting businesses like that. So yeah. So I got this lovely broom from Haydenville Broom Works has already been in use. I swept and washed the kitchen floor this morning and it was fabulous. You have to hang them or they will distort at the bottom. So it's got a nice leather hang. Um, and I, I hanging, I found a spot for it in my, in my, um, mud room and it, it lives in there. It hangs in there and it's, it's beautiful. And if you think about a, a tool, a cleaning tool that you would use in your house, you know, a decent cleaning tool. Um, this was reasonably priced. It was $40. I mean, I don't think you could get a broom at Home Depot for less than 20 or 30 to have a handmade item for $40. I thought was pretty good. So that was that. So then I wandered around some more. And this is where I really spent all of my money. I went to talk to the lovely ladies at the wheel thing. They're at Rhinebeck. And um, they're the ones who carried the Jenkins spindles. They got some from Wanda because I was teaching the support the Turkish spindle class last year. And I emailed Wanda and asked if she could make some available. So she sent a lot of them to the wheel thing. And I didn't even know that she did that so many. Um, and it was great. So we were chatting about that and then we we're chatting about spindles and I saw that she had some and I bought a spindle. And the reason I bought it was she told me a story about the spindle. This is a maker that I, I, don't have one by, by the spindle maker. This is a Thomas Forrester spindle. And it's typical of his style. He has a very high um, shaft before the hook is on. And then he makes things that look kind of like gears. Um, they're very steampunk, some of them. A lot of them are very heavy, so um, that probably wouldn't be anything I'd be that interested in because I, I enjoy a lighter spindle. But I saw this one and it's an ounce. And it's also made of, um, of birch, birch and hickory. And I love birch trees. So this is pretty special spindle. Um, it's not the most gorgeous spindle that I own, but it's very special um, because of the birch and, and the story she told me. And she said that that um, Thomas is now in ill health and he had to retire from spindle making. He's up in Canada and he sent his inventory to the wheel thing and there aren't many left. And this one was from his private collection. And then there's not, none like this made um, out there. I think he only made one and that was it. That was part of his private collection. He just sent them all to her to be sold. So this is a really special tool. And 
as you can see, I've already started spinning on it. I love it. It's fabulous. I love it because it's got this long shaft and you can thigh roll with it very easily. So that's what I've been doing. And I've been spinning. Um, I had this in my stash. It is a bat dropping. And I can't remember the maker. If they're, from, they're on Etsy. I'll put it in the show notes. And oh my goodness. I'm enjoying spinning on this so much. It's beautiful and very functional. I, it spins forever. I mean, I can, oh, my hand up here, it's still spinning. Fantastic. So I am very pleased with this purchase. I sold four spindles. So I got one new one. I, I sold some supported spindles. I'm not, I'm not really into supporting spindles spindling as much as I am drop spindling. I do like supported spindling, um, but there's really only one that I've had a lot of success with, and that's my trindle, my little micro trindle. I, I like spinning on that. And the rest of them, mm, I just stash some of them because I'm not as successful with them, but I am successful with this, so love that. All right, so that's that. And then the very last, no, that's, this is not the last thing. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Um, and the last barn was stitched by Jessalou. And she's a very famous bag maker, and she makes beautiful bags. And I had seen this fabric on um, the Fat Squirrel Speaks podcast. And she does not sell bags out of this fabric, probably because of, because of Stitch by Jessalou does. <laughs> and I fell in love with it. And when I saw that she had it, I had to have it. It has a spinning wheel on it. It has knitting on it, crochet, um, all, you know, old fashioned washing. You know, how people used to wash clothes. It has just all of these, these, um, antiques that people used many years ago, functional, um, a pump, a water pump. Rich used to collect a lot of these things, an old iron. We used to have a lot of this stuff. We have some of it still, but we got rid of a lot of it. Rich, Rich is fascinated by old um, utilitarian tools and, and things people used years, years ago, and this is covered with it. So, Fabulous. It's a beautiful bag. And she had one with a turquoise zipper and a peach colored zipper, and I got the peach one because, I don't know, I just like the way it looked because there's peach in the bag. It's very pretty. So this bag is going to be for my um, barn raising square blanket that I'm going to be starting when I finish that beast. <laughs> that great American Afghan beast that I love knitting, <laughs> but it's a lot of knitting. Um, so inside here, I have already put some mini skeins. And these mini skeins are from my friend, Kristen Wollenbein. She, she sent them to me. I got them last week and I showed them on the show that never was, and then I forgot to show them when I recorded up here last. So here they are. They're living in here, and they're beautiful. A lot of them are, are her own colors. Outlander is in here. I've never knit with Outlander, which is beautiful. Oh, my goodness. And this one's sparkly, which, hello, sparkly. Um, these three, four, are hand-spun from Hobbledy Hoy Bats. And, oh, I love these. And what's interesting about these is that they are much um, more worsted spun than mine. Um, they're much more even, they're not as fuzzy. They're still soft as anything. Um, but it's definitely a different style of spinning. And I can't wait to knit with them. Super excited. No, I think there's three. Yep. This green one, this teal one, and this gray one. 
so that's awesome such pretty colors love so yeah I can't wait can't wait to start that project but I have to finish my great American Afghan first but that's fine I did one square this month I'm almost done with it I want to do three but I knit this instead so what are you gonna do beautiful bag beautiful little skeins okay almost done one more thing so on my way out next to this booth with the beautiful hand processed fleece I found someone who who did bamboo um, woodworking and I got a shawl pin which is a toggle shawl pin it's beautiful I think it's beautiful it's kind of like a lacy pattern on there And you put one end in a lace part of your shawl and the other end in another part and it holds it together. So that's really cool. And then I got this, just a regular pin with a pin backing. And this is the knit stitch. I hope you can see that. This is the knit stitch. It's really pretty. So that's that. And that is by Katie Wes Westcott, maker of bamboo buttons, jewelry, and knitting tools. And she has an Etsy shop, and I will link to it in the show notes. But um, this is her card. She had some really nice things. Needle gauges. Beautiful. And that was it. It's enough. <laughs> so, yeah. Traded some stash for some new stash that I'm absolutely in love with and will be using very much it's not just gonna sit there so pick up my bam bamboo locks okay all right so that's about it for today um, I wanted to remind you keep knitting in the chunk along um, there's some beautiful projects in that in that thread I have not touched my hat since I started it so that's why I'm not showing it to you but on my way to Utica next week, in two weeks, I am going to finish that hat. I want to finish that hat. I need just dedicated time to knit on it. Um, so do the chunk along. My next recording date will likely be mid-May. So I want to say the weekend after Mother's Day weekend. Um, because with everything going on, um, we're, we're going down to get Emily. She's graduating from college and I have to get our, we have to get our son up in Utica. And this is all in the next week and a half. <laughs> so it's gonna be crazy. And then Mother's Day weekend, we're just gonna relax. I'll have both kids home, yay, that'll be awesome. So we'll do something, we'll hang out. And then probably the following weekend, mid-May, I'll record again. And then I'll probably record the week after that. So I'll have two shows again in May. I'm trying to do two shows a month. So that's about it. Um, come talk in the group. Let me know what you think about all the things I've been talking about. And, oh, I also wanted to mention, 
I haven't had a lot. I've had new people join my group, but if you join, introduce yourselves. I think what I'll start to do, if you introduce yourself in the group, I will um, say hi to you like other podcasters do. So yeah, join the group, introduce yourself. I'll say hi to you on the show in the beginning. We'll do a little introductions. I'd love to do that just like other podcasters do. So yeah, join the group. And that's about it. So I hope you enjoy your weather, your nicer weather, hopefully where you are. And um, spring is here. Uh, have a great Mother's Day, um, whether you are a mother or not. Enjoy the day, the beautiful day. And yeah, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye. <music>